It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Memphis assistant coach of women's basketball, Abby Jump. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks, Brandon, for having me. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get into college coaching? Mm -hmm. Uh, My dad uh, was a coach as well as my grandpa. Um, They both coached on the high school level. Uh, So I think I've always had coaching kind of in my blood. Uh, And it wasn't until I got to Wright State as a player that I knew that I wanted to coach on the collegiate level. Um, Just have had a really great coaches in my career um, that have helped me and impacted my life. And so uh, the best thing that I, I figured I could do and what felt natural to me was to do the same. How did your collegiate career help you to know that you wanted to become a coach? Yeah, again, I think it's my, the coaches I played for, um, just how passionate they were, um, how they got the most out of me. Uh, I became a much better player than I ever anticipated being. Um, I had a great overall student athlete experience and and just wanting to do the same, wanting to give back uh, what, what was given to me. What was your college time like playing for Wright State? Yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, Played for a staff that was, again, passionate, compassionate. They wanted to win. They knew how to win. Um, Followed Mike Bradbury. I originally committed to him at Moorhead State. And when he went to Wright State, I just felt like I really wanted to play for him. Like he was he was going to be the best person uh, to play under uh, how I how I like to play and that I would Uh, be successful in his system Um, but it was it was a great experience we came in and uh, helped turn around the program and went to the first ever NCAA tournament um, appearance and and won a conference championship against Green Bay who was top 25 at the time Um, so it's just you know things that you dream about as a little kid uh, got to actually experience Um, but I'm forever grateful for my experience as a player at Wright State. Of course, as a player, what was it like leading the right state to the 2014 NCAA tournament? Yeah, I played um, a small role. I was a role player. I came in and made shots when I needed to uh, relieve the point guard uh, when she needed a break. And and I really uh, took ownership in that role. I wanted to be the best that I could be uh, on, on the practice squad leading up to any game and uh, just wanted to help prepare the main players. And, and so I felt that when we won in 2014, it was really special for me because I knew in that locker room, we all bought in into what uh, what coaches, what our coaches said we could do. And I just felt like um, it's what we attacked every single day. And then for it to actually happen was, was pretty special. Of course, what was it like to get the opportunity to coach at your alma mater of Wright State? Mm-hmm. Uh, incredibly special. Uh, that's home to me. I grew up there and again, just uh, meant the world to me to be able to be on the sidelines in that capacity because that's the place where I knew I wanted to become a college coach at. And obviously what made it even more special is working for Trina. Uh, She was an assistant coach when I played there at Wright State. So being able to come back, work for her and it be at home um, and just a dream come true, uh, a time that I'll always cherish and be grateful for. What was it like whenever you got the opportunity to coach at Moore, Moorhead State? Uh, again, another place I'm grateful for. Greg Todd gave me an opportunity when I was 23 to be a recruiting coordinator. Um, probably had no business being in that spot, but he trusted me. And uh, it was a great experience um, for, for the situation that we're in now in rebuilding here at Memphis. I got to experience that at Moorhead State, kind of what it took and and the buy-in and and so at Moorhead State, I think we were picked second to last my first year and ended up finished second and going to the first ever WNITA appearance. So it was just an incredible opportunity to walk into a spot that wanted to succeed, players that wanted to win, and, and we were able to do that. Um, so I'm grateful for my two years there and, and working for Greg Todd. 
Of course, what was it like to obviously build that program at Moorhead State and obviously mold it? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it was awesome just because it was the mentality. We had everything we needed to um, in place to be successful there. The players were talented. They were hungry to win, hungry to succeed. And um, the program had known success before. Again, Mike Bradbury was there and won 20 plus games uh, before going to Wright State. Um, so there's some familiarity for me knowing that you can win there. Um, and then again, Greg Todd, he had won at every spot he's ever been at, high school, division three, um, and then going to Moorhead State. So um, it was an incredible two years, won 41, 42 games um, in two years, which was a great accomplishment. And um, again, I, I think it, it helped me grow in so many different ways as a person and, and as a coach to have been there. What was your path along the way to lead you, obviously, to where you are now at Memphis? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of coaching stops? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, going from uh, graduating at Wright State, knowing that I wanted to coach and going to Bucknell, I had an incredible opportunity to start at Bucknell, um, which was in the Patriot League and worked for Aaron Roussel, who's now at the University of Richmond. Just an incredible mind for the game and um, just brilliant X's and O's wise. And uh, I learned so much from him in, in year one. And, and again, he gave me a lot of opportunity um, and gave me a, a pretty big role in that first year and uh, working with a great staff there, then going to Moorhead State, just kind of progressing my way through. But one thing that sticks out to why I'm here now is just because of the staffs and the colleagues that I've worked with and for. Uh, I've just been around incredible people who do things the right way um, and that are winners and, and compete and are passionate and, and care about the overall student athlete experience. And so I think my path has been more than I ever could have dreamed of. You know, I've been at several different spots and we've been able to win championships at, you know, multiple and, and Moorhead State being going to the first postseason. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm just incredibly grateful for the stops I've made so far. Of course, leading you to obviously Memphis, what was it like to take the job at Memphis to become the assistant coach? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been awesome, uh, just to come with the staff that we've all been together, uh, coming from Wright State, it's a well-oiled machine, and, um, I'm incredibly grateful to just be in the office with, with the same staff, uh, I think we feed off what, off each other well, and, um, coming to Memphis, again, was another dream come true, this is a basketball city, and, um, again, this program has known much success in the past, and, and so we're just really excited to get the ball rolling and, and trying to get it back to what it what it has been before. What are some of your roles and responsibility as the recruitment coordinator? Mm -hmm. um, well, recruiting uh, overall, I think we all have uh, the ability to recruit and we all know how to make connections and, and that on staff. So uh, recruiting, it, it goes across the board for our entire staff, but for me, um, you know, to take a bigger role in that and, and making sure that everything kind of falls into place when we do have recruits on campus and uh, making sure that paperwork and, and whatnot is um, on top of everything that way. And um, so uh, recruiting, even though I'm the recruiting coordinator, it's, it's huge for all of us on staff. Of course, being the recruitment coordinator, what is it like to obviously oversee the official visit and set up the official visit with prospective student athletes? Yeah, uh, just making sure that, um, you know, they're, they're meeting the people that they need to meet that they'll see on a, a regular basis, uh, making it very much like it's a, a day in the life of being a student athlete here and making sure that them and the PSA and their family um, understand and, and see all the special things that are uh, here at Memphis and, and about our program. So um, I take great pride in it just to make sure that, that the PSA and their family feel like when they leave, um, that they got to see everything that they would need to see to make, a, make the right decision. What happens on the official visit for obviously the PSAs? Mm -hmm. um, again, just meeting the right people uh, that they'll spend a lot of their time with, whether it's academics, uh, the athletic trainers, um, obviously spending time with our coaching staff. Um, for us, the, our biggest selling piece is always the team. 
uh, you're joining the team. So to be around the players, to watch practice, see how we operate, see how, our, you know, the PSA can fit into our system. Um, obviously, we will sit down and break bread a few times and have meals together and um, just have a lot of conversations. You know, we try to keep it um, we just want it to be authentic and genuine and, and so that they know the true us and, and that we're not really putting on uh, a show or anything. We just, um, we want them to know and, and understand that this is what it would feel like to be a, a student athlete here and uh, what you see is what you get with us and with our team as well. What are some of your game day routines and rituals like as the assistant coach? Um, well, for me personally, um, I, I'm still listening to music like I did as a player just to kind of calm my nerves and, and whatnot. Um, but I'll get to a game early and, and kind of write our scouting report up and, and game notes up on the board. Um, so it's a little bit easier to go through for the players to see it uh, when they're in the locker room and when we have our our talk prior to walking out on the floor before the game. Um, but I, I, I kind of like to just relax um, and just not let the nerves get the best of me and and uh, come in just ready to go. What is it like playing in, of course, the American Conference and playing teams like East Carolina? Mm -hmm. um, well, the American Conference is extremely competitive from top to bottom. So you know, I don't think that we're mainly focusing on one, two or three teams. Uh, I think that every game is in, as, as important as the next one. Um, you know, so it, it's important to, to compete against every single team um, like they're the top in the league and uh, just prepare as if it's the most important game because it is at the time. Um, so we're excited. The American League is really tough, like I said, competitive and uh, just really grateful to be in, be in a great league. What are some of your future plans as a coach in this upcoming year as you prepare for your season? Mm -hmm. um, just to bring energy and, and again, uh, help our team and help our players, help our staff in any way I possibly can uh, so that we can be successful, so that we can uh, roll the ball out come November and feel prepared. Um, so just continue to, to impact and, and lead in, in any way I need to. What advice would you give prospective student athletes looking to obviously play co college women's basketball? Yeah, to find your niche, um, find it, what it is that you're great at, um, as well as continuing the other things in your game to grow that as well. But to find your niche and, and ultimately that will help in, in making a decision on where to go uh, and play in college. Uh, to know what you're good at, know what you can bring to the table. And then whatever that is, is to work on it every single day. What advice would you give those college basketball players that are looking to transition from playing basketball to getting into college coaching? Mm -hmm. uh, be a sponge. And uh, at all times you're interviewing, uh, you never know who's in the room and, and who could be a future employer one day for you, uh, whether it's the staff you play for now or, um, you know, this profession, although it's big, it's small at the same time. So we all know a lot of people. Um, so you're always interviewing. Uh, and, and even if we didn't have an opening, you know, we know other people that may, may have openings. And so be a sponge, soak things up. Um, you know, understand that your perspective is going to change when you're on the other side. Um, but just to be ready at all times and, and when an opportunity presents itself, to be ready to, to take it and, and to kind of jump into the fire a little bit. What advice would you have college coaches looking to get into coaching college women's basketball? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't know everything. I'm continuously learning um, all the time from, from not just our staff, but uh, from my mentors um, at other places as well. And, you know, I can always appreciate talking to other coaches and, and the things that they bring um, to the table. So I think it's just to continuously learn, you know, um, there's a hundred ways to do something and, uh, each program is ran differently and um, people lead differently. So I think to have conversations, to network, uh, continue to do that uh, so that we can continue to grow the game. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media, along with obviously the Memphis Women's Basketball Program app? Uh, yeah, uh, so we're on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I believe mine is Coach A Jump um on twitter and instagram and our memphis women's basketball is memphis and then wbb 
Thank you again, Coach Abby Jump, for your interview, and best of luck in your future as you begin your coaching career at Memphis. No problem. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate it. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Abby Jump, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.